A tangent line to a curve is a line that comes and lightly touches a, a curve or a function f of x at a particular point so that the y values agree, but not just that, also the slopes of the function and the slopes of the tangent line also agree. So it looks something like this. If, if this is f of x, this is the blue line, and the yellow line is y equals mx plus b, at the point of tangency, here's what you would expect to happen. You would expect that the slope, and remember that's written as f prime, or that's the derivative of f, at the point c, right, at this given point right here, because it might change at another uh, point other than c, but the slope specifically at c should agree with the slope of this tangent line, namely that's, that's m. So the slopes agree and the y values agree at, at this point of tangency here. Now, one thing we can use tangent lines to do is we can use tangent lines to approximate a function, an uglier function, at points around C. So I'm going to put a little box around these points here. Just, just look at this box here. You'll notice, gr granted, I'll, I'll admit there is some error, but basically the tangent line follows the function. So wherever the function goes, the tangent function is close behind it or very close to it. So now why, why would we use something like this? Well, uh, this is used a lot in like computer science, for example, where if f of x is a really ugly function and you're trying to evaluate it at x values around, let's say, 2, uh, evaluate the function at 1.9 and 2.1 and 1.85 and whatnot, plugging it into an actual function could be called computationally expensive, which means if, if this is a degree 10 polynomial, think of all the operations you would have to do to plug in 1.8, let's say. You'd have to take that value to the 10th power, and as well as any lower powers, 9th power, 8th power, etc., multiply times all those coefficients that they would have, and then add it and subtract all those individual terms in that large polynomial. At the end, you know, you could do 20, 30, 40 calculations just for plugging in that one x value. But if we're okay with a little bit of error, you could use a linear equation to roughly evaluate it at the same points, 1.8 or 1.9 or what have you. And think of how many computations are used there. Y equals M times X plus B. That's only two. So, you know, if, if we're okay with an approximation, if we're okay with a little bit of error, we can use a tangent line to evaluate the function or come close to it rather than the function itself. So um, to get the equation of a tangent line, we'll need two things. We'll need the slope of the curve, uh, in this case, the slope of the yellow line, the slope of the tangent line, and we'll need a y-intercept. So we're gonna, do, we're gonna do both of those things here. Uh, we're gonna do this as we do an example as well. So here, let's say we have a function really ugly, 1 half x to the sixth minus x to the fifth plus 3x squared minus 7x plus one. And we want to approximate that function around x equals 1. Now, I went ahead and took the liberty of graphing it on my ti. And then I, I went ahead and drew what the tangent line lo would look like at 1. So I can kind of see its y value and I can kind of see what the slope is. But we have to go through and do the, the algebra. All right, so to do the algebra, first thing we need to do is take this guy's derivative right here. I've got to take f's derivative. I need to find f prime. Fortunately, this is kind of a, a simple function to take the derivative of. We'll just use some basic derivative rules. So this guy's derivative would be 6 times a half, that's 3, x to the fifth, that's 6 minus 1, power rule, minus 5x to the fourth, that's the power rule, plus 6x minus 7, and then plus 0, because the derivative of a constant is zero. All right, now this would give you the slope at any given x. So we're not going to use this as the m as the slope for our tangent line because this isn't a constant. I need the slope specifically at one because if we were to plug in one and then plug in two or three or four, we'd get different numbers uh, as we plug in those values for x. So let's find f prime specifically at one. Little algebra. 3 minus 5 is negative 2. Negative 2 plus 6 will make 4. 
4 minus 7 makes a slope of negative 3. Now look at my line right here. I, I would believe that looks something like a slope of negative 3. I, I buy that. So next we need to find the y-intercept of this tangent line. So we have this equation y equals mx plus b and we just found the m. The m was negative 3. So we can update our line by saying y equals negative 3x plus b. And then uh, next up we have to find the, the y-intercept. Now how are we going to do that? Well, we actually know something about the original function. Uh, x equals 1 was a very nice value. It was a nice round integer value. We could take this and plug it in the function to at least find the y value at 1. Now that's not the same as the y value at uh, 0.9 or 1.1, but, but it should be a relatively easy y value to find. Now we come to find out that when we plug in 1 for x, we get out negative 3.5 for y. And you can, you can test me in that real quick by, by plugging in 1. Basically we get a half minus 1 plus 3 minus 7 plus 1. So the minus 1 and the plus 1 cancel. 3 minus 7 is negative 4 plus a half makes negative 3 and a half. So that makes negative 7 halves. So that's the point of tangency. And this is an x, y location we know something about. So when we plug in 1 for x, we expect to get negative 7 halves out for y. So we set up an equation like this. And this is enough information to reveal what b is. It looks like b is going to be minus a half, right? Minus a half. So uh, we have our answer. The equation of the tangent line would be y equals mx plus b. The m was negative 3, as we found from the derivative, right? x minus a half. And when I look back at my, my graph, that, that looks pretty realistic. I, mean, I, I, could, I would believe that. I would believe that answer there. All right, now, uh, final thing, what are we using this tangent line for? Well, let me take this equation and I'll put it in my calculator along with the original equation. Here it is. So negative 3x minus a half as well as this one. So let me pull up my, my TI here and you, you can do the same. Uh, first of all, we'd plug in the original equation. Now, I went ahead and did that just to save us a little bit of time. And then I'm also going to plug in the other equation, negative 3x minus a half and let's graph it all right and you can see here's the curve and then here's the uh, the line here um, that's the tangent line I could even zoom in a little bit and you can see right here at 1 you have a point of tangency the linear function comes down and lightly touches at 1 and it's exactly what we were looking for all right now what was I referring to when I said tangent line approximation well, let me go to a table here. You see on your TI, it's the secondary button above graph. We go to second table. We'll have some values, but, but actually let, let me adjust my, my table here. We'll go to table set, make it a little bit more realistic. Let's start our table at positive one, positive one right here. And this delta table is how wide do you want the units between X values on your table? So we'll make that something small, typically like 0.1 or 0.05. Now the independent variables are the x's and the dependent variables are the, are the y's because the y's depend on x. Uh, now you can either let it automatically generate those or um, make it ask you for certain ones. Uh, for speed, I'm just going to let it automatically generate all of them. So you notice my table starts at 1 and then it goes to the next value by a distance of 0.1. So right here at, uh, at x equals 1, we get negative 3.5 for y1. That was the actual function. And look at y2. That was the, the line. So look back here. y1 was the degree 6 ugly terrible polynomial. And y2 was the linear function. Check out how close they are. They're, they're fantastic approximations to the actual function here. Obviously, at 1 is a perfect fit. Now, why is it perfect? Well, that was the point of tangency. We set it up that way. But look at 0 0.9, 0 0.8, 0 0.7 and compare the x values to the y values. I know they're pretty small, but you have values like negative 3.195 compared to negative 3.2. Now, the actual value of negative 3.195 would have been a nightmare 
to try to evaluate by hand with this uh, degree six polynomial plugging 0.9 into all that very very ugly algebra y equals mx plus b I could have done that on scratch paper in the margins of my notes and you get basically the same value they're just very very close approximations uh, same thing for 1.1 1 1.2 1 1.3 now I will admit uh, look as I keep going away far away from one to two to three to four what do you notice starts to happen as you deviate away from one well the error is going to start to grow and you can you can see that in the graph if I go back to the graph right here you can see as you move to the right the line and the curve is going to fan out and fan apart but that's okay we're we're just trying to locally approximate function values now if you wanted the approximation to be good around four or five or some other value well then you would just set up your point of tangency to not be at one but to be at four or five and you would make sure that the slope at four or five matches not uh, the slope at one so you can center these tangent lines wherever you want to center them